chapter 6. <laughs> Sorry, there are 11 chapters, maybe 12. <coughs> the ugly thing. The ugly thing about a cat licking a man's exposed bloody brain isn't the way the lobes stick to the furry tongue. It's the way the brain wobbles after the tongue lets go. <laughs> Quivering in its bone bowl of clear fluid as if it were alive. Quivering as if the tongue had tickled it. Quivering as if brains ever quivered inside the skull in the first place. Chapter 7, The Bitter Wife. First, she boils it. Then she cracks apart the primary pieces. She polishes each bone slab as smooth as a pearled plate. Then she continues their fight where it left off, shattering these new dishes on the floor. Chapter 8, <laughs> The Strangest Skull. The archaeologist had brushed his share of dust from buried bones and sand dunes, but he'd never seen anything like Buktakamunen, the sixth, <laughs> the, the infamous blind pharaoh of Nivea. Bukta Six's skeletal remains were all normal save for the skull. His cranium had no fissures, and there were plates of bone where eye sockets should have been. A thorough investigation disclosed that the cause of Bukta's death was a blow to the back of the head with a hammer. The archaeologist knew of the legend of the blind pharaoh whose eyes shone light as bright as the sun, but dared not speak it to his colleagues. Who would believe that his head had been opened like a piggy bank by some impatient seeker of truth? No. The archaeologist would keep silent, holding his secret locked as tight inside as the light that once broiled within the pharaoh's head, because some truths are meant to be kept locked in the crypt. Chapter 9, Resonant Eyes. If you lick your fingertip and run it steadily around the rim of an eye socket, you can produce a tone as deep and hollow as a bassoon. <laughs> Perhaps even better. But more uncanny is the aura of color that projects into the dark hole of the socket if you continue to play the head instrument, a hazy marble of light that mimics the dead man's original eye color. But you won't have the courage to spin that rim and stare at that ghost eye for too long because the song it sings begins to sound more and more like an alien language murmuring your name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ch chapter 10, fissures. Do they hold the bones together or do they threaten to break it apart? If the skull holds the brain in place, what holds the skull together? The man with a scalpel moves towards the tied up surgeon's face, probing for answers. Chapter 11, <laughs> knock off the auction block. When the package arrived, I tore it open. The human skull was in the hat box, packed in bubble wrap, just like the eBay listing said it would be. I slid it out and held it before me like a kid who got a football helmet for Christmas. It was bigger and heavier than I ever expected, and whiter, bleached white. The listing online said it was authentic, but I didn't expect it to be as white as an eggshell. I'd read that the serial killer enjoyed cooking some of the body parts he'd eaten, but I'd never heard that he'd actually boiled a human head. And as time passed and the skull sat under the glass of my trophy case, staring back at me, I wondered more and more whether I really invested in the killer's fine handiwork or just blew my money on someone's old garbage. <laughs> Chapter 12, Doofus. A boy tears the jaw off his brother's skull. Who's the doofus now, he asks, as if expecting the grim overbite to answer. That's my favorite one, too. Epilogue. Up for air. The final skull, wet in your hands, is your daughter's. And she certainly has more stories to tell. <laughs>